let's do some fun activity with UML. So let's create a new project. Name this as test. Doesn't matter, we can give any name. Uh, and I get an empty model. Let's add a view. Fun activity. And here I'll create a package. And let's name this as microwave kitchen microwave. Let's create an object. So add an element, a class microwave. And for this microwave object, let's understand the state machine or the different states in which it can be in and from which state to which state it can go and from which state to which state it can't go. Okay, if you are not familiar with state machine diagrams, you will, you know, by the end of this exercise, you will get a good idea of what we are talking of. Remember, we are talking of a single object. So, a particular state, uh, microwave machine. Okay, so what are the different states? So, when we switch on the microwave, it will start initializing. Okay. Then, once it is initialized, it will go to idle state. Basically, it will not do anything. Then, maybe we will put something in the microwave and start it. So, it will be in, say, working stage. And we might pause it. So, it will be in paused state. So, if you think about it, the microwave has only three states, idle, paused or working. Anything else? Nothing else. Now, what we need to figure out is what will be its initial state. So, initial state would be, so I will use a transition to show that when it gets instantiated, it will go to initializing state. From initialization state, it will go to idle state. From idle state, it will go to working state. From working state, it will go to paused state. From paused state, where will it go? It can go back to working. If we say resume or it can go to idle state. From working state also it can go to idle state. So let me just close off all this because they occupy screen space. Okay. So we got an idea of what are the different states that the microwave can be in and from which state to which state it can go. Okay. So now we have to figure out what is the trigger for that transition. So what is the trigger? Switch on. So when it is switched on, it will go to initializing stage. From initializing, it will go to what will be the trigger to go to idle state. Basically, we require a condition. Initialized is the condition and the trigger is ready. Okay. From idle state, it will go to working state. When will it go to working state? When there is a trigger start. Okay, so let's save this. Is there any condition that has to be satisfied? Door is closed. That condition has to be satisfied. If door is not closed, it will not go to working state. It will remain in idle state. Maybe it will beep. 
okay now it starts working once the work is over what will happen a trigger will be there done yes and maybe at that time it will be is that the only trigger possible for it to go to idle state no there is one more trigger that could happen new let's add one more and that is stop so either done or stop we can show it as two separate transitions as well okay now from working we might actually press the pause button so what will be the trigger pause any guard condition required no so pause it will go to pause state again here what will happen when will it go back to working state when we press start again or this this actually is button is usually marked as start and slash resume okay and here again the condition that has to be satisfied is door closed from paused itself we can ask it to stop okay now there is actually another trigger by which this can go to idle state from working and that is actually i said done instead of that i could have said time finished usually these are kept for a particular time that once the time is over it will stop so either we stop it manually or it gets stopped once the time is up yes any anything else that we can think of okay so that is a very simple um, um, state machine diagram now it might happen that uh, you know there are other objects which will send a signal that signal has to be handled here for example we might have a timer as a separate object right so the moment we click on start what will it do one of the other things that it will do is start timer okay so start timer and once it goes to pause what should it do it should pause timer so that the timer doesn't keep running and once it is stopped stop time okay so i think there might be a object which is playing the role of a smoke alarm so whenever it detects smoke it will send a signal or it will throw a signal without bothering with uh, who is going to handle that signal it will just send a signal and this will receive that signal and take the appropriate action so maybe there is another trigger we can add what is that smoke alarm detected so in that case also it will go to idle state okay i suddenly realized one more thing that it will go from working to paused not only when i press pause but also when i open the door right so when i open the door it will automatically goes to the paused state and naturally as part of that timer is paused but the same thing doesn't happen in the reverse way from paused it will not you know the moment i close the door it doesn't start automatically we have to press the start button 
Okay, so see that's the whole purpose of modeling. So the purpose of modeling is to ensure our understanding of what the problem is or what the solution should be. And the second is communicating our understanding to others. Because if I give this diagram to somebody else with the understanding that he knows UML, then I don't have to sit and explain to him my thoughts. The diagram itself is self-explanatory and he will be able to understand. Okay, that's it for now. Bye.